Hi, welcome. So in this video, we're just going to go through two examples of writing the equations of planes in three dimensions. So for this first example, let's find the equation of a plane that contains the point negative two, one, three, and the normal vector n equals one, one, negative four. So I wrote here that we're going to find both the vector and scalar equations, but typically we end up finding the scalar equation since it comes from the vector equation. So I wrote that here and we'll probably pause and point out the vector equation, but just know that the scalar equation is usually where we end up. Okay, so if you'd like, you could pause now and take a moment and try this on your own. Look at the equation for a plane and how we come up with it and see what you can do with this information we were given. All right, so we have the normal vector, but we're going to need the vector that's in the plane that is based on the point we were given. So what we do is I do x minus the x component, so it's x minus a negative two or x plus two. Then I do y minus the y component, y minus one, and then z minus the z component, so I have z minus three. And this is my vector in the plane that we're trying to find the equation for. And then I also have this vector n, that's one, one, negative four. This is my normal vector that's orthogonal to the plane, and I was given this at the beginning of the problem. So we know that orthogonal vectors have a dot product of zero, and since we have a vector in the plane and a vector orthogonal to the plane, we know that n dot v is going to be equal to zero. So given this information, I can put in my vectors for n and v and solve. So my n is one, one, negative four, and I'm dotting it with my v vector. So just this written as is, this dot product, this is technically the vector equation of the plane. As I mentioned before, this doesn't look like a whole lot and this isn't really our final answer. So we're typically gonna go one more step and find the scalar equation of the plane. So in order to find that, I'm just going to compute the dot product. So I do one times x plus two, that's the product of the x components. I add it to one times y minus one. That's the product of the y components. And then I add it to negative four times z minus three. That's the product of the z components. And this is equal to zero. And as written, if I just clean it up a little bit, this is my scalar equation of the plane. So x plus two plus y minus one minus four times z minus three. So this would be a fine answer as is, and we found the equation of the plane. However, we have some unnecessary parentheses here, and really we can simplify this pretty easily. So let's go ahead and do that. Also, simplifying your answer usually makes it easier to compare to other ways of solving. So if you're doing this with someone or you're trying to compare to solutions, simplifying this is going to make it easier to do that, to compare between answers. So I'm going to get rid of the parentheses on the first two terms, and then I'll distribute that negative four. So I have negative four z plus 12. Now I can combine like terms. So I still have x plus y minus four z, but when I combine all of the constants, I'm getting a plus 13. So x plus y minus four z plus 13 is going to be my simplified scalar equation. And often you'll even see that plus 13 on the other side. Either way is fine. This is our scalar equation of the plane. Okay, so we were given most of the information that we needed for this problem, but let's do one that's a little more complicated. So let's find the scalar equation of the plane that goes through these three points, one, negative seven, two, three, zero, one, and four, one, five. So we have three points, and we know that in order to make the equation of a plane, we're going to need a point and a normal vector. I was given more than enough points, but I don't have a normal vector, so we're going to need to do some work to find that normal vector. I'll explain how this works, but if you'd like, you can pause now and see what you can come up with for how we might find a normal vector based on these three points that are in the plane. Oh, 
Okay, so if we think about our three points being in the plane, I'm just gonna draw them sort of arbitrarily here. What we're going to do is draw two vectors in the plane based on these points. So let's just pick one as our sort of middle starting point, and I'll draw two vectors from that point to the other points. And let's call these vectors A and B. So I have three points, I've made two vectors from those points, and now I have two vectors in my plane that I'm looking for the formula for. Now, if I take two vectors and I take their cross product, that's going to give me an orthogonal vector. And so our cross product is gonna come in quite handy here. So if I do A cross B, I'm going to get this normal vector. As a comment, you can choose which vectors to make out of the three points. So this is going to work regardless of sort of which point you choose to draw the vectors between. We're going to get a normal vector that works, and when we simplify to get the final version of the equation of the plane, it's always going to look the same, as long as we've done the intermediate steps properly. So I'm just going to pick my choice of points, and you could choose different points and different vectors, but I'll just choose some and go with it. So for my A vector, let's do it between the points 4, 1, 5, and 1, negative 7, 2. So it starts at 1, negative 7, 2, and points to 4, 1, 5. So I'll take the components and subtract them. 4 minus 1, 1 minus negative 7, and 5 minus 2. And this gives me the vector 3, 8, 3. I'll call this vector A like in the picture I drew. Then I'll take another vector that starts at 1, negative 7, 2, and goes to 3, 0, 1. So again, we subtract the components, 3 minus 1, 0 minus negative 7, and negative 1 minus 2, which is giving me the vector 2, 7, negative 3. And this is my B vector. So remember, we were given three points and we're trying to find the equation of a plane. To write the equation of a plane, we need a point and a normal vector. So we're still searching for that normal vector. And to get that, we're going to take the cross product of these two vectors. So to do A cross B, I'm going to use the shortcut method. You can do this cross product however you'd like. I really like this method. It's just the easiest way that I know how to do cross products, and it's sort of always how I've done them. So we write I, J, K, I, J, and I'm going to write A and then repeat it, and then B and then repeat it. And I go positive across these first diagonals and then negative across the backward diagonals. So this is a little bit tedious, but I'll go through it. Just follow with me. Or you can pause now and try it on your own if you'd like. That's actually a pretty good suggestion. You might just want to pause now and try to find this cross product on your own. But I'll keep going. So going across the positive diagonals, I'm doing 8 times negative 3. That's my i. And then 2 times 3 as my j. And then 7 times 3 as my k. Then I subtract each of the backward diagonals. So I do minus a negative 3 times 3j, minus a 7 times 3i, and then minus a 2 times 8k. Now this is just about simplifying it up. So 8 times a negative 3 is negative 24, 2 times 3 is 6, 7 times 3 is 21, negative 3 times 3, but with a negative is a plus 9, minus 21i, minus 16k. That's a lot of numbers. Hopefully you can follow along. Like I said, it might be good to pause and try it on your own at any point. Now I'm just going to combine my i, j, and k terms. So negative 24 minus 21 for my i gives me negative 45i. 6 plus 9 for my j is 15j. And then 21 minus 16k is 5k. So this is my normal vector, and I can write it in vector form if I'd like. That's negative 45, 15, 5. So if, for example, you did B cross A instead of A cross B, you're going to get negatives that are swapped for your normal vector. Or if you chose different points to draw your vectors between, like you draw them in different directions, you're also going to get a different normal vector. But it should all come together when we write the equation of the plane and simplify it. So I'll write, so instead of going through the dot product equaling zero, I'm just going to write out the version of the formula that's our scalar equation. So I have a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus c naught. 
the a, b, c come from my normal vector, and then the x naught, y naught, z naught is one of my points on the plane. You can choose any point you'd like and you should get the same answer. I'm going to use 3, 0, negative 1, but any of the points will work. The normal vector works in such a way that it is like the proper scaling of each of the points in order to make this come out properly. You can try it on your own if you'd like. You can try a different point and make sure it works. So I'm putting in my normal vector, and then I'm doing x minus 3, y minus 0, and z minus a negative 1. And this is equal to 0. So I'm going to simplify by combining everything together in order to get my final simplified version. So I'm just distributing, and then I'm going to combine like terms. This is kind of boring to talk through, so hopefully you can follow through on the screen. But eventually I'm getting my final formula, which is negative 45x plus 15y plus 5z plus 140 equals 0. And this is my equation of the plane through the three points I was given. If you tried this using different points or a different combination and you got the same answer, that's totally awesome, that should work. If something went wrong, let me know, we can talk through it together and see what happened. Okay, that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.